Hey, what's up guys? Brandon Lee with Virtualization How To. Hope you guys are doing really well. Do you have Kubernetes running in your home lab environment? If you're like me, when you first heard the word Kubernetes and thinking about your home lab environment, it, it was a little bit scary. And it still can be a little bit scary. But in all honesty, building your own Kubernetes cluster for your home lab environment is actually not that difficult. So what we're going to cover today is we're going to take a look at how you can build your own Kubernetes cluster from scratch just using some virtual machines in your home lab environment. So let's dive right in. Let's use my home lab environment and let's build a Kubernetes cluster together from scratch. And don't worry, we're going to do this every step of the way together. What you see on the screen is three identically configured Ubuntu server VMs. And I have my virtual machines running on top of VMware vSphere, but that doesn't matter. You can be using Proxmox, XCPNG, Hyper-V, VMware Workstation, VirtualBox, whatever the solution is that you want to use in your home lab environment. But I have a host that I have named KMaster, a host that I have named KWorker1, and another host is called KWorker2. As you can see, the KMaster machine is the one that we are going to designate as the control node for the Kubernetes cluster. It's where the API is going to exist, etcd, and all of the management aspects of the Kubernetes cluster. So we're going to use KMaster to build the Kubernetes cluster. Then we're going to join KWorker1 as well as KWorker2 to the Kubernetes cluster that we have built. One of the things that I want to mention for home lab purposes, for the purposes of learning, for rinse and repeat, so to speak, if you run into problems or issues or something just doesn't work right, or you feel like you just want to start over, and retrace your steps. Leverage snapshots. Most virtualized hypervisors that you can run virtual machines inside of, they have the ability to create snapshots on your virtual machines. What I like to do before I start working with Kubernetes is I like to create those pristine virtual machines that are uh, free of any configuration, nothing has been loaded aside from updates and just the normal network configurations take a baseline snapshot. That way you have something to roll back to. I can't tell you how many times I have uh, kicked myself because I did not create a snapshot before running a series of commands incorrectly or doing something I shouldn't have done. Create your VMware or other hypervisor snapshot at this point before we get started with configuration. The first thing that we're going to do on all of the virtual machines is disable the swap. Now, why is this necessary? Well, there are specifics that I'm not going to go into detail around. You can Google this and find a lot of really nice explanations of it. But turning off the swap allows the kubelet to function correctly and as expected. To do that, the first command that we're going to run is sudo swap off a simple command, no output there. Next, we're going to follow through and we're going to edit the Etsy FS tab file and we're going to comment out swap. Like so. We're going to save that. So at this point, we should have swap effectively disabled. Next, we're going to install Docker. To do that, we're going to use the command sudo apt install docker.io and we're going to pass the dash y. Next, in my environment, I need to install curl. If you already have curl installed, you can skip this step. Next, we're going to add the repository key for downloading and installing Kubernetes. We're going to now follow that up with adding the actual repository. Since we have added a new repository, we're going to run an apt update. 
Now that we have the Kubernetes repository added, we're going to install kubeadm, kubelet, kubectl, and Kubernetes. If you have noticed, all of the commands that I've ran so far have been ran only on the K master node. What I like to do in my home lab environment is I like to run all of the commands down to the kubeadm init command, which is the next command we're about to run, only on the master node. In Kubernetes, we can build the Kubernetes cluster only having the master node. And this allows us to get the cluster up and running. Then we get the special command that the console actually gives to us where we can copy and paste that into our worker nodes so that they can join the cluster. Now that we have all of the prerequisites in place, the next command is very simple. We're going to build the Kubernetes cluster. To do that, we need the simple command sudo kubeadm init. As you can see, the kubeadm init command has finished successfully, and we now have the join command that is output to the console. So we can use that to join our worker nodes to the Kubernetes cluster. Now, I am in the process of running and catching up my worker nodes with where we are with the Kubernetes control node. Again, we're going to stop short of running the kubeadm init command on the two worker nodes. And instead, we're going to run the special kubeadm join command that is displayed on the console. I now have the k worker nodes caught up with the k master node. And I will just briefly show you guys the last command that was ran on the k worker one node was installing all of the Kubernetes components, kubeadm, kubelet, kubectl, Kubernetes, and the same for kworker2. Now, as you see still displayed in the kmaster output, we have the special kubeadm join command, which we can literally copy. And now we're going to paste that into our worker nodes and they begin the process of effectively joining the Kubernetes cluster that has been instantiated in the kmaster node. As you can see from the output of kworker1 and kworker2, they have successfully joined the Kubernetes cluster. If you notice on the Kubernetes cluster, if I want to go and start looking at cluster resources, um, I get a connection to server uh, localhost 8080 was refused. Now, the reason for that is we need to copy some configuration files. Uh, since we're logged in as root, which I am, I'm going to copy those configuration files to my home directory. Now that we have the configuration copied, let's see if we can connect to the Kubernetes cluster. Now, something looks a bit ominous though. As you can see, we have all of the nodes, but they are showing in the not ready state. The reason for that is we have yet to deploy container networking. So that is one of the last steps that we need to take is deploy our container networking solution. And for my Kubernetes cluster in the home lab, we're going to deploy Calico. To deploy Calico is very simple. We just need to pull down the YAML configuration file from the internet and apply it to our Kubernetes cluster. To do that, we're going to simply issue the kubectl apply with the address of the Calico YAML configuration file. Now that we have Calico deployed, let's take another look at the Kubernetes cluster itself. See if it's in the ready state. And there you have it. We have three nodes in the Kubernetes cluster, all showing in the ready status. Now that Calico is deployed, we're ready to now start deploying our pods. So what do you think about building a Kubernetes cluster from scratch? It was fairly straightforward to get a Kubernetes master node up and running. And then using the kubeadm join command, it makes it easy to then onboard 
as many worker nodes as you want to join in your cluster. Well, I'm Brandon Lee. I hope you've enjoyed this content. Please do like the video and do subscribe to the channel. It lets me know that you guys appreciate the content and you like the direction that I'm going. Thank you guys again. I hope you're doing really well. Keep on learning, keep labbing, and I will see you guys soon.